Bring us in, Matt. Originals versus sequels. Go. Is that concise enough for you, Max? Good job. All right. How do you guys feel about sequels? I think Ryan and I have the same... Same belief system when it comes to sequels. What is that? In a way. In a way. Can I have this back? No. You lost the privilege. You kept clicking it. What is that? What is our belief? System? Well, your belief system, and I'm I'm putting your belief of something else onto this, but your belief system for like, uh, book books and then movies or other media then movies. You're kind of saying they're a different world. If if the movie's bad or if the movie's good, it doesn't reflect upon the book. A movie can never be a book. Right. Okay. Well, I feel like a sequel can never be the same. A sequel can never be a first movie. First movies are special, they're new, sequels are a continuation of that, and I don't feel like a bad sequel can ruin a franchise or ruin a movie. That's how I feel. Just want to put that out there before we go on. Well, okay, so how do we, how do we define sequels then? Are, are the Lord of the Rings, is the, are trilogies Sequels? Yeah, trilogies have a sequel in them. So then you don't think that a uh, single Lord of the Rings movie, if it was horrible, could ruin the no. entire trilogy no, experience? No. It's subjective. That, that's kind of a special case in which we all know that those three movies were designed from the ground up to follow one another. Whereas a movie like Star Wars, you know, always thought of as a trilogy, but truth of the matter is, they made the first one and they were like, oh, okay, this did so well, we're going to make another one. Then why did it start on episode three? It started in episode four. <laughs> episode four. Because that was just, I mean, what I'm saying is, if that movie hadn't done well, they wouldn't have made another one. That's for any movie, cool. though. You don't think they planned, you don't think they had the first three planned? First three Star Wars? Yeah. I doubt it. Why would they just start in episode four? Well, it wasn't episode four at the time. Yeah, it was. It was just Star Wars A New Hope. No, it goes episode four. <laughs> Star Wars A New Hope. It does. Max is, Max is technically right. But what I'm saying is that, that was the first time that, you know, the idea of a franchise, you know? Yeah. I know what you're saying because before it was like, you know, we complain about a lot of remakes. Not so much this past two summers, but the summer before and summer before that, like, Oh, it's a remake. It's a remake of an old film. They've been doing remakes since the first film came out. Like, Shit, Shakespeare was doing remakes. Yeah, I mean, and it's funny because you can go back, you know, and look, well, look at old movies. And you're like, oh, this movie's so old and sucks. And then they actually back then made a remake of that movie. Like, they always rebooted. They never had, like, a franchise, like, sequels and stuff. Except for The Mummy, the Mummy, Mummy Returns. Horror movies, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I think this might kind There's of... There's a lot of ruin. horror movies that did that. What? This might kind of ruin the argument, but I think that, you know, it, it depends on if there's a worthwhile story to be told for the sequel. Like, is there more story to tell, or are they just trying to make a buck? I realize that, like, makes it a very subjective argument, and you can't really say all sequels do that or no sequels do that. But I, I think you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. Yeah, there are some that are... That are conceived. <laughs> what are you I feel like this is going to be a very general statement. I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> there are some no, that no, may no. be good. I, it's uh, a very general topic. I feel like there are some that are conceived, you know, at conception, they're planned to be whatever, a trilogy or a, two of them or four or whatever. Yeah. And there's others like you were mentioning, like Halloween or yeah. Freddy, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, which are. You just make one. If it makes money, you make the next one. Yeah. If it makes money, you make the next one. They're non-continuous. And there so might on. Be one. Well, I mean, the, the story is still... Nah. Oh, it's... Speaking of... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was going to say, do you know in Final Destination, the last one they made, did you guys see that? Let's not talk about that. I'm really excited about watching okay, it, but I haven't seen it yet. All right, sorry. Because I've heard awesome things about it. Okay. And I know it ties around to the first one. It really ties cool around way. to the first one. In a really cool way. In a cool I way. I don't know. That's all I wanted to say. Stop. That's all I wanted to say. Right. I haven't seen it either. I just heard the same thing. <laughs> so let's talk about some sequels that you guys didn't like. I'm usually I'm usually I usually like sequels, but then whenever it gets to a third one, yeah, they go they go way downhill for me. I don't know why. It's because it's the end of the story. I don't know and what you're it upset. is. That's not the case. It's yes. because 
I don't know why. Let's talk about great sequels. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Awesome. It's amazing. Terminator 2. Spider-Man 2. Terminator 2. Better than the first. Godfather 2. Very classic one. I think what it is is... A lot of people don't like that. Godfather 2? Yeah. It's What do you mean? It's like the best movie in the world. It's number one in most top 100 movies of all time. Okay, okay. I'm thinking of... Godfather 2 or 1? Godfather 2. It's oh, like, it's oh. known as the best sequel of all know, time. I didn't know there's more than one. There's three. I think of it as one entity. <laughs> it's kind of like Men in Black. <laughs> well, I, I think that um, the second movie in a trilogy, like, I, I remember one one summer there was just like a bunch of thirds coming out. Like, Shrek the Third came out, Spider-Man 3 came out, and they were all kind of underwhelming. Although I like Spider-Man 3, I know Ryan doesn't. Is that true, Ryan? That's true. I don't like Spider-Man 3. I don't like Lord of the Rings 3. Matrix 3. Matrix 3. You didn't like Lord of the Rings 3? Well, I, uh, not as near as much as the other two. He said it ended too happy. Yeah, it did. Somebody needed to die. Frodo dies. Frodo doesn't die. He Frodo goes... Doesn't. Huh? Frodo mm. doesn't. Where does he go? Where does he, he go? He dying to live with the Valar. Yeah, that's dying. Eternity, that's dying. No, he goes to Valinor. In fact, everyone dies except for him and the people that are on that boat and the elves. Dummy. Look, I don't know what you guys are talking about at this point. All I know is somebody needed to die on the journey to getting that ring into the mount, into the Boromir volcano. Died. That's what needed to happen. What? Boromir. Boromir he, doesn't count. He was a bad guy. He died in the first one. Boromir was not a bad guy. He turned out to be pretty cool, and he was defending him, but, I mean, he was trying to steal the ring. Didn't everyone try to steal the ring at one point? What they were trying to say, they were trying to say is that the ring corrupts people. That's why Aragorn could never Listen, take it. Listen, nobody liked Boromir until he did cool shit and defended Frodo and what's-his-name whenever he died. That's Boromir. the only time anybody liked Boromir. Boromir is the best character. He's the most complex character. He wants to protect his homeland. That's what the whole story is about. Listen, Boromir dying is a, he's like a third-rate character. He's not enough to give it a tragic ending. He, it wasn't he even a die in the end. He died in the second movie, or the first movie. Yeah. I can't, can we end this podcast? I can't. <laughs> he wasn't a big enough character to make a tragic ending. Okay. for the, the. He wasn't even at the end. All right, sequels when handled well are great, but original <laughs> stories are always going to have, you know, originality. Great. Now we're going to have a next special, which is why Boromir is awesome and Ryan's wrong. <laughs> All right. We were, we were close to the end, right? <laughs> sure. I had a lot more to say. Well, let's go on. We got a few minutes. Okay, go ahead, Max. Okay, it has more to do with Ryan's and most of America's love to hate affair with trilogies. They always hate the last movie in a trilogy. It's because you guys don't want to deal with loss. It's not because I love to hate it. It's just yeah. because they're lesser movies. No, it's not. It because is. here's what... Here, how is Matrix 3... Inferior to Matrix 2. Matrix 2 had all the cool cool fight scenes. Matrix 3 is boring. It's in the real world. There's mech fight scenes in they the real have, world. Those are boring. They have a huge epic battle. Yeah, but it's in the real world. It's not cool. No, I'm talking about the battle between Neo and, and Agent Smith. It's apocalyptic. I mean, it's the yeah, end but of the world. I'd already seen two awesome Every ones in the second movie, so just a third one not that cool. Yeah, nothing's ever going to be when he was fighting on the playground and Matrix re uh, reloaded. That was so awesome. You remember that? Yeah, I remember it. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, that's not insane. You guys don't have a good defense. You don't have a good argument. You just don't like the third one. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. As you guys always say. They're lesser movies. It's not, I mean, it's not that I am sad the story is ending. Spider-Man yeah. 3 is not as good as Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. That's just a fact. That's a fact of... No, it's not a fact. That, okay, sorry. And that's an opinion of 99% of people who watch movies. 99%? Here's the deal. Yeah. So Spider-Man 3 and is Matt, the 1%. You, did you like Spider-Man 3 better than 1 and 2? Yes. Better than? Yeah, better than... I liked than it as much. much. No, you can't, you just magically it's just as good. Yeah. There's no better, no tiny bit better, no tiny bit worse. I'd rather watch Spider-Man 3 again than 1 or 2. No, okay, well, you're they an idiot. They totally, they totally messed up Venom. How'd they, they mess they up Venom? They messed up everything in that movie. 
It, it was the worst character. He was totally miscast. Topher Grace? Are you are you kidding me? They tried to cram way too much into it. I loved. I, I like Spider Man Three a lot. Don't get me wrong. It's nowhere near as good as the second one or the first one. Okay. See, that's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying all these are horrible movies. I liked the third Lord of the Rings. I'm just saying it wasn't as good as the first or second. I didn't I'm like it as much as the first. Thirty-three percent. Thirty-three percent of this room likes Spider-Man Three. It was so you, one not person. Ninety-nine percent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not talking about the people in the room. Well. I'm talking about. I said movie watchers. <laughs> I didn't say the three of us. Do you watch movies, Matt? <laughs> Can we talk about Boromir again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I think it's time to end it. Whether or not you like Boromir, he didn't deserve to get his head chopped off and it pro- put on a pike. And he didn't get it chopped off and put on a pike. Uh, yeah, he did. You're thinking of... I was going to spoil it. I just thought I wasn't going to spoil that. If you haven't watched... By now, you're not going to. <laughs> Matt fact. Matt fact. <laughs> Boromir is the only, he's probably the most well rounded character in the entire trilogy. God, dude. He's the only one who wrestles with. Everybody else is either good or bad. Nobody else. Gollum. Okay, Gollum's, Gollum's a very well developed, good character. Frodo. No, Frodo is all good. And when he's bad, you can tell it's the ring. Whereas Boromir, there's like a layer of, uh, you know, you're not quite sure what's going on with Boromir. Is he selfish? Does he just want to protect his homeland? Okay, we're going on way too long, but none of what you're saying changes the fact that, first of all, his death wasn't at the end of the series, of the trilogy. Yeah, but it resonates to the third one. <laughs> Second of all, no, it doesn't. Yeah. Second of all, his death alone is not tragic enough to... To call it a tragic ending for Lord of the Rings. I remember... It doesn't even make sense. I remember going to the third movie, and everyone... I, after we sat down, like all of us strangers were looking at each other, and we are like, Man, can you remember what happened to Boromir? <laughs> Dude, not cool. Yeah, that's because... Everyone was all real shook up about it still. <laughs> it's the most significant point in the entire movie. It, it, it shows the entire... It's the entire point is that, yeah, they could have... Aragorn could have just taken the ring. He could have, you know... Beating the crap out of Sauron, but at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? He would have become the very thing that he hated. That's what the entire the entire book is about. You missed it, Ryan. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>